Inside of production scale nuclear reactors, we want to minimize hot spots and hot channels. This is where one region is much hotter than the others. In BWRs, this can lead to a departure from nucleate boiling. This is when bubbles have stopped forming on the surface of the cladding, and the coolant is instead evaporating in sheets, creating a void region right outside of the cladding. This is thus sometimes called film boiling. The figure here displays the transitions from nucleate boiling to the departure from nucleate boiling. Control rods affect the distribution of the flux profile, and therefore also the power and temperature profiles, inside of the core. Standard operating procedure for most reactors has control rods partially inserted into the core at different depths depending on where they are. Suppose that there is a single control rod partially axially inserted into the core, as seen in this figure. The flux will end up being depressed in the region of the control rod as opposed to if the rod was fully withdrawn from the core. Meanwhile, the flux, power, and related quantities will be higher in the region below where the control rod is inserted. This is in order to maintain a constant total power. In reality, there are many control rods, each at a finely tuned depth. As we see in this figure, we have different control rods as a function of radius in the reactor. This depth typically changes as a function of both radius in the core and time. As the time since the last refueling increases, the control rods are slowly withdrawn in order to add reactivity to the core and maintain a constant power. Meanwhile, different steam generators have different thermal properties. From chemistry, we should all be familiar with the Carnot cycle, as seen in this figure here. Denote the thermal efficiency as the fraction eta, such that eta equals the temperature of the input minus the temperature of the output divided by the temperature of the input. Both the inlet and outlet temperatures are measured in Kelvin. For pressurized water reactors, the temperatures are measured in the coolant loop, not the pressure loop. For PWRs, the inlet temperature is approximately 548 Kelvin, which condenses down to the boiling point of water. Therefore, the thermal efficiency in this case is approximately equal to one-third. Most reactors actually use the Rankine cycle, where the thermal efficiency is higher, approximately 40%. The efficiency difference is important because the output of produced electrical energy and power is eta multiplied by the thermal energy and power coming from fission. Symbolically, the electric energy is equal to the efficiency times the thermal energy, and the electric power is equal to the thermal efficiency times the thermal power. Also affecting the industrial scale energy balance is the capacity factor. This is the fraction of time that all reactors are actually operating at full capacity, i.e. power. Today's reactor fleet operates at a capacity factor greater than 90%. In the 1960s, the capacity factor was approximately half. Note that it is very difficult to obtain a capacity factor greater than about 95% because most reactors need to go down for refueling which takes approximately one month out of every 18 months of operation. So including the capacity factor in our generation equations, we see that the electric energy is equal to the capacity factor times the thermal efficiency times the thermal energy, and the electric power is equal to the capacity factor times the thermal efficiency times the thermal power. A mill is one one-thousandth of a U.S. dollar. So a mill is equal to one-tenth of one cent. Electricity happens to be sold in units of mills per kilowatt hour. Let's call P in mills per kilowatt hour the price of electricity. A reactor will then make a revenue R in mills equal to P times the electric energy 
or P times the capacity factor times the thermal efficiency times the thermal energy. The price of electricity is typically 10 to 50 mils per kilowatt hour. The production cost of nuclear power may be split into three categories. Capital costs are the overnight investment needed to build the facility, amateurized over the lifetime of the facility. For modern reactors, this is between $1 and $10 billion. Loans are typically discounted through the normal discounting equation. Operation and maintenance costs are the everyday costs of running the facility. In the United States, this included a disposal fee until recently. Fuel costs are the costs of producing fresh fuel assemblies to place into the core. Like maintenance costs, this is a recurring cost.